So, hey everybody, uh, I run the Navy's Mixed Reality Lab, we call it the Beamer Lab. And I'm going to talk to you about three things today. The first is I'm going to tell you about the lab. Second, I'm going to tell you about one of the AR projects that we've been working on. And the third is I'm going to talk to you about some of the unique challenges we have in using AR on board ship. So, um, the lab is in San Diego. We're inside a U.S. Navy research lab. It's called Space Wars System Center Pacific. So that lab is about 4,000 people, and the Beamer Lab is a small portion of that. We're about 15 people. So a small lab within a large Navy lab. There's lots of Navy labs all over the U.S. We've been around the Beamer Lab for about three and a half years, and our mission is to focus on all of the low-cost, consumer and commercial immersive technology that's out there. And what we're gonna try and do is figure out how the Navy's gonna use it. And specifically, we focus on training, maintenance, prototyping, and operations. So in San Diego at our Beamer Lab, we have a really cool demonstration and education space. We spend a lot of time educating DOD VIPs who come into our space about AR and VR because a lot of them certainly don't know what AR is, but a lot of them haven't even seen VR before. So we do a lot of education. So I'm going to show you a fun little marketing video that we just put together and just released uh, that kind of describes our lab. Welcome to the Beamer Lab. I'm Ava, your virtual assistant. In this lab, we're using immersive technologies to explore the spectrum of mixed reality in order to understand what the next generation will expect when they walk into the workplace of the future. It's always nice seeing new technology and being able to work with that, getting hands-on with it. You, know, you see stuff on TV, it's nice from the government side to actually see that and get that in your hands. And our goal is to determine how this type of low-cost immersive technology is going to be used in the Navy in the next five to ten years. And specifically, what we focus on is training, maintenance, prototyping, and operations. The sailors, when they come into the lab, are highly engaged and excited. They love it. They think it's, this is the way of the future, and this is how training should go, and this is what they want to see for operations on the ship. I'm excited about whatever is the newest thing on the market. And right now, a lot of augmented reality headsets are the newest thing. And so it's exciting to see the advancements that are being made every few months. So we want to make the holodeck, the Star Trek holodeck, exist. That's what we want, but, but slowly. <laughs> so just a fun little marketing video that we send out to all the DOD visitors before they come into the lab so that they have an idea of what they're going to see inside of our lab. So let me talk about one of the projects that we've recently been working on called Gunner. So Gunner started back in 2016 at an innovation jam aboard the USS Essex. And so an innovation jam is this kind of like a shark tank sort of thing where sailors get to come up on stage and pitch an idea. And usually that idea is a solution to a hard problem that they encounter in their everyday you know, work environment. So the winner of that innovation jam was a Lieutenant JG who had this concept for a gunner's heads up display. And he said, I want to see my firing commands. I don't want to hear my firing commands. And so um, let me talk to you why that issue was such a problem for him and so important for him. So uh, I'm going to play a little video here. Two, one, two, three, two, one, 
So let me tell you what's going on there. I mean, obviously you can figure out who the gunner is in this scene, but there's a guy standing next to him who's screaming orders at him. And what he's screaming right now in this video is one, two, and three. And so all they're training on there is they're trying to figure out how the, the triggers on the gun work. And he's trying to fire off one shot, two shots, or three shots. But normally this guy standing next to him would be screaming firing commands at him. So not only would he be screaming firing commands, you know, fire, cease fire, that type of thing, but he'd also be yelling a bearing. And so that's a bearing off of the ship as to where the target is. So you can imagine in this super noisy, super stressful environment, if there's multiple targets off in the distance and you're being shouted at to fire on target at bearing 195 and you've got like four targets out there, how do you know which one's at 195? So um, obviously seeing your firing commands and seeing situational awareness and information and all sorts of things is a lot better than hearing them screamed at you in this noisy, confusing, stressful environment. So we worked with Daiquiri and we were using their smart helmet and we did two live fire exercises. And so I'm going to show you a video of a live fire exercise aboard the USS Bunker Hill uh, during a naval exercise called Trident Warrior, which is off the coast of California. And so um, what we're trying to show here is the Daiquiri smart helmet, AR smart helmet, connected with a tablet for wireless communications. And so now that person giving the firing commands can just type it into the tablet and send it remotely to the gunner. Again, we did two live fire exercises aboard ships uh, with this headset uh, very recently. But when we started this effort back in 2016, I didn't have my HoloLenses yet and I didn't have my Daiquiri headset yet. And so we had to start on this effort um, without any AR headset. So we decided, well, let's prototype everything in virtual reality. And so this was really, really cool because we were able to build out the deck of the destroyer. We've got a, a museum replica gun in there that you can see. It's tracked with the HTC Vive controllers, and we're able to put you virtually onto the deck of the destroyer and let you experience you know, a gunfight. And so we were able to bring that lieutenant in every so often, and he could see the different visuals as they progressed, and he could make comments, and we could tweak it on the fly. And eventually we got the headset, and we were able to do the live fire exercise. But this makes for a really cool demo in our lab, and in fact, everyone who comes through our lab goes through this demo, because who wouldn't want to get on the deck of a DDG and start firing at things? So I want to show you what that looks like in VR. And can you turn up the volume a little bit? Multiple surface contacts bearing 350, range 12.4 miles, closing fast. Mount 150, track targets bearing 350. This is Talon 46, inbound on hostile targets. Copy 46, you want clear to engage. Talon 46, engaging.
So again, this is just a fun little demo that we show. I mean, it's really fun because at, at this point, sea whiz goes off over your shoulder, a five inch gun starts firing over your shoulder. Would never happen that way in real life, but this is a fun demo that we like to bring admirals through. So they get a kick out of it. But so again, the point of this is a fun demo and the cool prototype. And here you can also see <clears throat> kind of what the vision of the future is. You know, in that real live fire exercise I did, all we had was bearing and firing commands. Here we've got designators over targets, other information in the scene. This is really where we want to go. And so again, I said, it's a really cool demo in our lab. There's Palmer Lucky doing our demo in the lab, wearing the HTC Vive headset. But again, it's a really fun demo. So now what I want to talk about for a minute is some of the unique problems with using AR on board ship. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because all these headsets that we're using are either consumer headsets or co commercial industrial headsets. And so they're built with you know, very specific application in mind, especially consumer headsets. They're built for people to use in their house, uh, in their workplace, walking down the street, going into a business. But what I want to get across to you all is that the military is going to buy up those headsets and we're going to do crazy stuff with them. And so I want to make people aware of what we're going to do with them versus what the consumer is going to do with them. So some of the unique problems that we have um, using AR on board ship is we've got crazy lighting conditions. So for example, there are times when you can go out on a ship and you can look at the ocean and the glint is absolutely blinding off of the ocean. So we have issues with the visuals um, being too light and fading out. So we need a way to go from the blinding glint and still see our visuals in the AR HUD to inside the ship into a dark room with brightly lit computer screens. Also, we have another condition, night operations. This is flight recovery on the deck of an aircraft carrier. We need to be able to see in low light conditions, maybe have some sort of IR, low vision capability as well, and see the visuals. Another interesting problem that we have is that we are going to use these headsets a lot more harder than a consumer would. And so, um, for example, we have extreme weather conditions on a ship. Salt water, rain, wind. Um, it could be very, very hot, depending on where you're operating very, very cold, depending on where you're operating. Obviously, rough conditions, so shock and vibe is important. The sailors are going to be using these for a long time. They, they're not just going to put them on for 30 minutes. They're going to use them for a longer period of time, so continuous use. And then, obviously, this is a super dangerous environment, so unimpaired field of view. We cannot have the peripheral vision obscured some way. Another interesting problem we have is we have a lot of trouble with the IMU. Now, again, Consumer use case, walking around your house, maybe going upstairs, moving around. On a ship, we're going to be walking around, going up and down stairs and ladders. Also, the ship's going to be rocking and pitching from the sea state, and then the ship is going to be doing maneuvers, and these maneuvers could be extreme. So there is a lot of motion on the ocean, and it's a little bit different than what the IMU would be dealing with for a home use case or a business use case. Additionally, we have issues with using SLAM in this environment. So again, the, the home use case, you know, you're moving from room to room and you have lots of cool, unique features. Well, sometimes the ocean is absolutely featureless. There's absolutely nothing out there. So if you're on watch and your job is to stare out at the ocean, there just might not be a lot out there. And then if there is something out there, that one target out there that you could use as a feature may be moving also. So you may be moving, it may be moving, lots of confusing stuff. So that is the ocean, but then also, I mean, if you've looked at a ship, it's big and gray, and that's about it. The starboard side looks pretty much identical to the port side. Um, it's gray, it's got some numbers and letters on it, it's got some pipes and railings, and so while there are a lot of things to look at on the ship, they're pretty much the same, and pretty much kind of descriptionless. Same with inside. On the inside of the ship, people can get lost in a big ship because it all looks the same. Corridors are long and gray. Again, pipes, railings, things like that, but nothing too unique like we would have moving from our dining room to our kitchen to our bedroom or outside. So one unique thing that we do have on ships that helps us navigate is that picture in the bottom corner there. We call it a bullseye. 
And so um, it's a way that if you know how to read those letters and numbers, you can figure out where you are on a ship. So that's one unique way that the sailors do navigate on board ship. Now, what we've been looking into, some of the research we've been doing, is we've been spending a lot of time LIDAR scanning uh, Navy ships. And, and some of the ships are super big, so it can take weeks to LIDAR scan a ship. And so you might say, the first question you might ask is, well, why would you need to LIDAR scan a ship or create a CAD model of a ship? Shouldn't you already have CAD models of all these ships? Well, no, we don't. A lot of our ships are super old, so they don't have CAD models. And then a lot of them are brand new ships with CAD models, but as soon as they get into service, a contractor comes on and installs a new system or moves this or moves that, and so the model has changed and it's not updated. So to be able to have the 3D model of a ship, which you could sort of use as a high resolution map for navigating the ship, in addition to optically reading the bullseye, in addition to the slam, the IMU would all help with navigation through a ship. So that kind of summarizes my lab and some of the projects that we do. And then also, again, what I just wanted to get across to you is that the military is going to grab up these headsets as soon as they're released, and we're gonna test them in weird ways that you probably haven't thought of yet. And so I wanted to make you aware of just some of the unique conditions under which these headsets might be tested. So thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. That was uh, fascinating. I really want to go on that gun. <laughs> Have we any questions? Yep, we've got a chance for a few kind of questions. <laughs> uh, we're, we're hiring, we tend to hire a lot of artists, so we're not hiring right now, how's that? Um, how reliable is the communication between controller and the Daiquiri helmet? Well, there's no Wi-Fi on ships, so that'll tell you something. We have a lot of security restrictions on ships, so I'll just leave it at that, it's a problem. Um, Gosh, can we install the VR demo in a personal HTC Vive if you talk to me? Maybe we can figure that out. Anything else? Oh gosh, there's a lot of questions. Secure environments are a big problem. That's our, that's our biggest problem, demoing on board these ships and doing these live fire exercises. It's always the security. That's the biggest challenge. Uh, time, we did time, the, the time delay question, we did time all those live fire exercises. Um, I don't quite remember the results of that experiment, but I know we did time it and the sailors were very positive of the Daiquiri helmet and the tablet, so I, I can't say that there were any issues with that. Thank you. Okay.